Good evening guys! Uh, what a surprise! This is a different one. I am quite a bit nervous about this. Are the dogs going to kick off? Is they going to be shouting in the streets because there's been some kind of football happening? But yeah, today a little bit of a different one. I will explain to you how we're planning to do this and then we'll see if it works. So I have a wee dog that I've got to needle felt and I thought this would be awesome to see if we could do live, see how this works. And while we're making this live, I've got a little chat for all you creators. Um, Rosani asked in my live on Sunday, um, she asked if we could have a talk about how to how to deal with creator burnout. So I've even, I have some notes, so I hopefully won't forget things that I'm wanting to talk about. But we're going to do a bit of felting. Fingers crossed this doesn't go to a disaster, but thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we have Margelin with us just now. I hope I said your name right. Yeah, Margelin. Yeah, that's an awesome name. Hi there. Um, welcome. If if you're in if you're in the live, um, if you can say hello in the chat, and we'll get the get the hellos done and get started with the felting. Uh, yeah, super. And if you want to give us a thumbs up if you're in in the chat as well, and I can see I can see who's here. Magellan, I got the name right. Awesome. Right. So i show you first of all the equipment. If anyone's felting along with me, I hope this isn't too rust. Russell it's a Dutch name awesome it's really pretty Margelin I haven't heard that at all that's so cool and Sue's here as well fantastic yeah so if anyone's looking to felt along with me then all I'm using is some floristry wire this is 22 gauge I have my needle felting needle and some fleece and hopefully we're at a nice wide enough angle with the camera that you're gonna better see what I'm doing and I'll just quickly show before we get started what I'm planning to make. You've probably seen it in the thumbnail, but let's head over, get the right screen. That's us. Yep. So this is a customer's dog. She wanted, and he's, he, no, it's definitely she. She sunbathes like this and she was just looking for a sculpture in this shape. And this is something that I've not, I've not shown you guys. So I thought we'd have a try and see if we can get it and see if we can sort it out. Crafting Amy. Hi there. How are you doing, Amy? So we've got Marjorie and Sue and Amy in the house. <laughs> right. So let's, let's see if we can do this without it being a disaster. Back to my big ugly face. Ah, has the football's gone into extra time, Sue. I didn't know that. I've not actually been following the football. And I'm in Scotland, so it's people are less, I'll say less into the football. There's a whole thing of anyone but England. So there will be a lot of people watching the football. Um, but the street's silent. Some of the other matches I've heard cheers and stuff, but I've not heard a single thing here. But yeah, so... Well, this is your escape from the football, <laughs> but thank you for letting me know. I didn't know that. Okay, so I have the 22 gauge. We'll see if we can have a look at this. I can probably bigger my screen myself so I can see what I'm doing. Um, this is a 22 gauge felting wire and they are paper wrapped. And it was a pack of 50, so hopefully this should last me a wee while. And I usually use about two for medium-sized dog. Now, what I've done, I've even... Usually I just wing these things, but I'm actually super nervous about this today. So I've quickly drawn out some random ideas of the sizes that I'm aiming for. I'm so sure... I've only done live felting once before. About a year ago, there was only two people watched, thankfully, because it was an utter disaster. But I've got this little dog here. This I've got the plan for the shape. So any of these strange looking shapes um, of dogs always start off with a kind of standing shape. And then once it's slightly felted, then start getting it into position. So I'm going to fold them in half first of all. This first wire is for the head and front legs and the shoulders. So I'm just going to fold that nicely, roughly in half. And the first section I'm wanting to do, oh goodness, right, the first section I'm wanting to do is going to be the head and the neck, which I want to wrap about six centimetres of, 
of this area. So I'm just taking it between my fingers and just twisting the wire, trying to keep it as even as possible so the legs stay the same length. It doesn't matter if they don't quite because I can snip it and fold it later. So let's see what six centimeters I have my cutting board on my lap here um, and I'm just measuring and I got that. Hang on, I have to show you. I have to show you this guys because that is so cool. I got that like almost straight away to six centimeters. I'm impressed with me. This is a good start. Right, so we've got that sorted out and I'm just going to fold out. So this is the head and neck. And this is going to be the shoulders and I take the second wire just going to find the center of this and I'm going to slip it over the head and the neck can you guys let me know if you can see this clear enough is this coming across clear so you can actually see what I'm doing so we've got the head and the front legs are poking out the side and the back legs are poking out the back and then I'm just going to take right this is the fiddly fiddly bit so I'm holding at the neck and I'm holding one of the one of the front legs and one of the back legs. Hi Rosani, how are you doing? Uh, good to see you because we are going to be talking about your creator burnout question which is awesome. Um, right, so I'm holding it like this and I'm just to make the shoulder I'm just pinching the front leg and the back leg on one side and just giving it a full rotation right the way around so the front is back where it was and the back's sticking out behind and then changing my grip and just again another full rotation round and this gives the shoulders which should be reasonably even so you get an idea back legs front legs and then just going to hold this lightly together now I'm wanting to make the back about seven centimeters which is not madly long so I'm just giving this a loose twist so I've got a kind of triangular shape that's like the chest and then coming in for the pelvis so you can see fine awesome thank you and I want this to be seven centimeters so just measuring up just need to give it a couple more twists and we're there perfect seven centimeters for the back and then bending that down and that's going to be his back legs so the front legs I'll do these now just bending them bending the front legs down and then for the shoulder blades they come out first of all a little bit and then I fold them back on themselves and then when it reaches just under where the shoulder is they come back again and that's how the the shoulder assembly of the dog is and for the back it's the back legs is the curve down for the hook and this is 22 gauge wire I think I said which is easy enough to manipulate with your hands but at the same time it's not it it's not too weak that it's not going to hold its shape right so Roughly wanting these legs at nine centimeters, which they kind of, they're not looking too bad. I'm just going to use my little diagram that I made just to see where we're at. And yeah, it's fitting quite good. The front legs are a little long, but that's that's generally what happens. Bending in some hocks, I am so not getting this even at all, but I'm trying to get it as even as I can. So it's a curve and then the hock straight down for the leg. So and so it's not jabby, I just want to fold over the bottom here at the back. And my needle nose flat pliers are upstairs, of course. I planned this out so well. Uh, so the front legs, just going to bend up a little bit extra because they're a bit longer. So I can make these into a kind of paw. So if you can see, there's just a little loop there. 
Hey, Brian, good to see you here. The poodle legs are a bit long. Yes, we'll, we'll call it a poodle. I think this dog's some kind of a doodle, so it's got a bit of poodle in it. The legs will get a bit shorter as I go along. You guys will see. If this works out, this is probably going to be a disaster. Right, so getting on to the wool wrapping here. So I've got a big pile of, this is the Carded White Corridale from World of Wool. It's the really cheap roving. Oh, roasted. Sorry if you can hear panting. The, the non-poodle dog at the side here, Ben, is roasting in the heat. So he's panting to cool off. So that's his his moment on live stream. Right, so I'm just going to take off wee chunks about four or five inches long. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brian. It's going to be awesome. I hope so. <laughs> Never done this live before, but we'll see. Well, I did it like did it live? It was a Pikachu. It was terrible. It was a total embarrassing disaster. Right, and these strips are just a little too thick for me to work with, so I'm just breaking them in half. And you can also get it a little thinner by drafting it out, which is just gently holding between your fingers and pulling so the fibres slip over each other. And you just get a bit of a longer piece. And I'll do this for front and back legs. So one strip makes the front legs and one strip makes the back legs. Even my computer's overheating, everything is too hot just now. The sun's gone away. We've had sun for about three weeks. The sun's gone away, but the the sweaty, sweaty heat is still here. Alright, so I'm starting at the top and I'm just gonna loop this. People ask about using sticky stuff and anything when you're wrapping wire, but you don't need to because the wool will stick to itself. So I'm just putting it around behind the back here twisting it round so there's a loop round the back and then wrapping it onto itself I'm just going to wrap down the legs. <laughs> guts greater than glory. No guts, no glory, that's so true. And it's really odd when I'm doing the slightly bigger animals with the wire like this I wrap from the top all the way down. When I'm doing the smaller ones with a pipe cleaner, I wrap from the foot all the way up. Who knows why? It's just what I do. So, wrap to leg, on with the needle, and just going to felt that in. So this is just like a first layer, and then I'm going to build up muscles and everything over it. But this is just to get everything to stick to it. And the exact same. Wrap it around the back a little bit, and then wrap around the leg so it hooks onto itself. Oh, already losing my voice, that's handy. So if you're in the stream, don't don't be shy, pop up and say hello or give us a wee thumbs up so I know you're here because yeah this is this is totally kind of weird. This is usually my time of night when I'm felting to myself. I'll put a box set on the telly and felt away so you guys are here to entertain me <laughs> throwing stuff all over the place. And so I asked in the Sunday live stream what kind of things you guys were looking for, what would you be interested in seeing and I got such good replies and um, we also we had some some ideas for new new features. Um, Wendy's come up with with a good idea for us to try that I'm just going to have to figure out the technology for, and then I'll get in touch with her, and we'll be doing that. Um, Rosani came up with such a good idea that I totally love, um, which is we're going to be looking at the the Boo review, looking at spooky stuff, um, reviewing spooky spooky stuff, not just from Etsy, but all sorts of spooky Halloween related things and I'm totally looking forward to that. Um, but also asking the question what to do about creator burnout which is such a good question. Um, 
seriously, it's something that we all face, no matter what kind of creator, if you're making YouTube videos, if you're making art, if you're trying to sell things online in the shop, if you're writing a blog, if anything, if you're creating stuff, especially if you're trying to do it for a living, the chances of burning out is a real problem. So what do we do about that? So I've got I've got some some ideas I have, some hopefully nice tips, some hard truths, and yeah, so we'll just get onto that while I'm wrapping these. So basically, and I, I wrote them down so so I won't forget my things and I don't go off ran, rambling and doing that Scottish thing of speaking nonsense for two hours. Okay, so number one, number one tip for, for burnout is very much community. As I just said, um, on Sunday I was kind of not feeling it a bit and I asked you guys what you were looking for, what what you wanted and you gave me so so many ideas that then suddenly after Sunday I was up half the night thinking ideas, writing down titles for videos, just other people giving me ideas just set everything back in motion and it felt great so community awesome and not only that but we've got for everyone who's video creators if you haven't already joined or if you haven't checked out Brian G Johnson you can click to get through to his channel from the chat at the side there um, but Brian is an awesome video creator I'm not allowed to call him a guru or anything but he helps us all out but he also has this fab community on Facebook it's Tube Tube Ritual so you want to hit that up people are so supportive and so helpful and it's a great community and that helps um, yeah so so a community can give you inspiration when you're feeling a bit down Brian is like the king of just being able to tell you at the right time that you've got it um, you're doing well someone someone who's not your mum telling you that you're doing well is always handy um, or giving you the kick up the backside to say that you're not doing well, that's always handy too. The dogs are doing crazy stuff. It is so warm and humid here just now. Um, also you can get ideas, uh, different types of community. If you're an artist and you're in just random artistic communities, then you can see what, what's popular, what people are doing. Like a couple of years ago everyone was making foxes. And they might have been painting foxes and you could sculpt a fox or, you know, it just gave you an idea or something different to make a bit of inspiration. Not to copy people. If someone's come up with an original idea, as we've spoke about tons of times, you can't copy someone's idea, but you might be inspired by it and be like, oh yeah, that thing, I can make that in my own medium. I can make that my own totally different way. So that is such a totally cool thing to do. Uh, so great for ideas and the other thing if you're creating like a blog or videos or anything like that I get lots of inspiration from the community of like when I'm thinking up Etsy tips videos being in the community and just seeing what questions people are asking seeing what things people are struggling with and you can do that the same if you have a shop and you're making certain things quite often people will be coming to you and asking where did you get this from? How did you do that? So that could give you an idea of a tutorial you could make for people or something something along those lines to kind of help them out a little bit. So you get inspiration with what people are asking for. So that's a really cool thing as well. All right. Tip number two, the, the big one that I always do, is just take a break in nature. Go for a walk, play with a Play with the dog. See, everyone needs dogs to be creative. Or cats. I suppose cats will do. But get out in nature. Just go take a wee break. Go for a walk by the beach. Go, Just go walk and that really helps. Well, I find that helps me get a little bit more inspiration. It sort of resets, which is really helpful. And there's always great new places to explore, as we see in my Sunday streams when I'm like showing off some of my pictures of the walks that we've been on. So break in nature, absolutely the best thing to do. Number three, this is this is the hard truth, is sometimes you've just got to suck it up. You've just got to, you can't just sit and go, my job is a creator. Oh no, I'm not in the mood. I can't do my job. Because if you had a day job, you can't go to your boss and say, no, I'm just not feeling it today. You've got to suck it up sometimes. You've just 
you've just got to get out there and do the work and sometimes you can get inspired by doing it but yeah it's tough if this is your living if this is your career you can't always sit and wait for the inspiration to hit sometimes you've just got to work sometimes you've got to graft but there's ways around that that we're coming coming up to in the next tips uh, tip number four such a powerful one is read your reviews read your comments read what other people have say have been saying about you the, the nice stuff but take a minute to look back and think of the lives you've changed the people you've helped the joy you've brought to people you know if you've been doing this if you've been doing anything creative for any length of time you should have some positive customers some nice feedback you, you should have had lives that you've touched if you've not got that then maybe you want to reassess what you're doing but you know we all I I have so many wonderful emails from people just commenting like if they've lost a pet or something and I've made a sculpture for them and they've just been so pleased with that so that's that's so totally cool um, so yeah that really helps with inspiration and just while I'm rambling away here, if you guys have any tips or have any questions about any of the tips just for how you deal with creative burnout, what do you do? If you let me know in the chat, what's that? It's probably over there. Yeah, if you let me know in the chat. Juice break. And so far with the dog, we've got him mainly covered so I'm going to start building up bulk on him this is so difficult because I've got to keep talking but my usual thing so guys tell me well I suppose if people use felting cushions they put the needle in the felting cushion but my general I just stick it in my mouth and I'm not going to do that just now <laughs> yeah so let me know what you guys do if you're not seeing the inspiration but tip number five for lack of inspiration if you're just not feeling it is try something different. Try something that you've wanted to try for a while. You know, if you've always been making, like for, oh, all of this year, I've basically most of the time had so many custom orders waiting that I haven't been able to just make creative things that I want. I do have the added, I do have the bonus that I can make videos on different things. I can take time for that. But sometimes just stop with your orders and make a dragon, make a butterfly, make make mud pies, make something that you've wanted to make you know, differently creative. So what I'm doing, I'm making a little tube of fleece to go over to make his thigh muscles. Uh, <laughs> it's lovely to see the dog develop but scary to watch me needle felt while looking at the camera. I would have stabbed myself by now. Yeah, danger felting. Uh, partially it takes it just takes years of practice because I like to like sit in front of the telly and just well sit in front of the computer, just watch put on a box set and just watch something. So I've got used to getting the feel for this. And I know people freak out about felting in the air, but I find this better because you know in the world where your fingertips are much, much better than so many than like if you're felting downwards into your hands on a cushion. Oh yay we've got a subscriber and I think there's not did the zombie show up for you guys. <laughs> so welcome you subscriber. Uh yeah so I can tell more rough more where in the world my fingertips are and you can get the needle in between them easier um but yeah stabbing myself does happen but also i'm not i'm not holding this very tightly so if i do hit my finger it's just going to stop it's not going to go in a whole lot but yeah i am going to stab myself um i'm just going to have to work really hard on not swearing if i stab myself and hopefully not bleeding all over everything that would make an interesting live stream um, but yeah, you get used to the feel of where your fingers are. <laughs> Danger felting. Uh, Teodora, is that right? That sounds cool. We're getting some nice names to challenge me. Greetings from Bulgaria. When I need inspiration, sometimes it helps when I go through all the materials and reorganise my, my workspace. Absolutely. If you're the kind of person that... Uh, 
uh, that would be procrastination for me. But I know so many people that can be inspired just by having a clean, in, in order space. I'm not a very organized person, but yeah, I totally understand that that could be a really great inspiration. Yeah, so thank you so much for sharing that. That's cool. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that because I'm not that kind of person. You can vaguely see some of the some of the wonderfully organized things at the side here. Now, where had we got to? Oh yeah, tried something new. So on to number six. <laughs> I'm gonna call this one Make Hay While the Sun Shines, which is basically, yeah, you're gonna have days when you are feeling creative. So spend those time and get out, you know, do do the creative stuff when you're feeling creative. Um, there's, so when you're feeling dead motivated, you can make the beautiful things. But when you're not feeling so motivated, then that's the time to maybe do your bookkeeping or, you know, there's work you can do that doesn't require much passion in fact it's probably best to do when you're not feeling all crafty and passionate so do the cool things do lots of cool things so if you're making videos or if you're making blog posts or facebook posts that's the dog having a scratch so if that's part of what you need to be doing then where did my pictures go um yeah so if, so if making posts or videos or stuff is part of what you need to be doing then you can batch out and do six seven eight videos posts anything like that all in one day when you're feeling really creative and really inspired and then when you're on a non-inspiration day then that's the day to do other things and yeah it's it's hard to remember what i'm saying when i'm not trying to stab myself yeah so you've made all these these videos or these posts or you've made lots of sculptures, lots of art, all in one day, and then you line them up. You you don't list them all at once. You don't release all the videos. You don't put up all your items in your shop. You just drip feed them over a few weeks or months, and then that way there's stuff happening. You're staying active, but you're not actually doing that much work. And that's another thing is it's actually really good time management as well. If you can get more like a production line, which is, is hard. I know you're, you're like, you want to be an artist, you want to be artistic. But if there's things that you can do repetitively, it, it's often better time management. So I found when I'm quiet, what I'll try and do is make, is make like some little dog body blanks or... Uh, feet, cat's feet for bookmarks and things. Um, if you were doing like card making or scrapbooking, you could say your die cut in shapes and things. You could cut out extra things from what you want or make extra stencils. You know, do do twice of what do twice as what you need all at the one time. Make loads, but also make extra so that you could have like make kits and everything so you know supplies so you make a full card but you've also got extra cutouts that you would put in in a kit for people who want to make cards so you've got loads of extra things done um oh yeah point seven yeah a really important one if you're feeling a lot of the time you can be feeling the kind of burnout because you've given yourself deadlines that are too strict you're saying you'll post to Facebook every day, or you'll post a, you'll post six videos a week, or your your turnaround time in your shop is going to be like two days to make stuff, and everything builds up, and you've got no time at all to get everything done, and you just feel stressed. So push everything back. Say, okay, I'm not going to release a video today. I'm not going to do that thing today. I'm going to take an extra week to create all my sculptures and then it's just it takes a weight off and you can be more creative because I know I've had that um at the run up to Christmas it can get really busy in my Etsy shop like scarily busy and I think one day I had 20 orders come in at the end of November and I'm going can I even make 20 orders in time for Christmas so what I had to do there was push back my 
my shipping times, you know, say it wasn't going to be made in all this time because it's just not possible, you know. And that kind of thing just took the, the weight off me. I didn't have to sit and think, oh, I've, I'm going to have to do like five every day, which I can't do. I can get down to a more sensible, manageable amount. Oh, eight I've already kind of covered. <laughs> I should actually pay attention to what I've written down. It's so much easier when you're doing these kind of videos if you can edit <coughs> and cut out the nonsense. But anyway, yeah, it's how to set up a production line and batch streamline making things. But yeah, I've mentioned it, but I will mention it again. It is super, super important. Um, I do have... I have the days when I'm feeling more creative and the days when I'm feeling less creative. So on a less creative day, I can, as you can see, I can do things like this without it taking up too much creativeness of mine. This is a repetitive process where I'm just making the body of the animal. It doesn't take a lot of artistic flair or inspiration. I know legs are like this. I put on thigh muscles, I'm just about to do the same to get a bit of a chest on it. it there's not there's not a whole lot of creativeness to it. Um, so I could make a few of these, bearing in mind whatever animal this is going to be, changes the shape slightly, but I can make a few animal bodies, I can make the blanks all in one kind of go when I'm sitting and not feeling very creative and I'm not feeling like I'm desperately wanting to pay attention to stuff and then when I'm feeling creative then that's the time to sit down and do the faces, do the fine detail, do the bits that make them them, that make them the animal they're supposed to be and then when that means that because that's the other thing, is when you're feeling totally creative, that's not the time to be doing the non-creative bits. If I was feeling massively creative today, this would be a terrible time to be sitting doing this. Because, you know, so I would want to move on to one of the animals that requires a bit more work. And the other thing is very much take the time to do the very non-creative things. There's so, so much stuff that you need to do with running your own business whether it's online selling or running videos or whatever else there's so much else you need to do that isn't just creating the stuff so take that time to do your taxes to bookkeep to research seo to sit and watch daft people like me make videos telling you how to do things to search out tools to research new things to order up all the new stuff that you need that's that's the times to do to do more stuff like that as well so yeah so roughly that's kind of the things i do to avoid creative burnout but i have to be honest the biggest one the biggest thing for me most of the time is just to remember what it was like when i was when I was gainfully employed, when I was working the nine to five job, there wasn't, oh, I'll just go for a walk because I'm not feeling it today. There wasn't any kind of breaks or anything like that, apart from the regimented things. So we already have so much more creative freedom. We have the time to take time off. And yeah, I'll probably be working until about one, two in the morning today because that's what I do. But I had a lie-in, I, I slept in this morning, so, you know, I can do all of that. So, yeah, it's it's tough and I might not feel inspired, but I just, my biggest advice is to suck it up. And I'm sorry, that's like really, <laughs> really tough. Um, but, but yeah, that's the best way. Right, so we start to have a bit of the dog's shape. Now I'm just, nearly put this in my mouth again. Now I'm just going to have a quick nosy at the actual shape of the dog. There's going to be a lot more moving about as time goes on, but I just want to shape this up a little bit into how he's going to finish up. So bending the legs over into the paws. So 
so so far let's actually kind of the one thing I was worried about with this was if it was going to be able to lie on its back very well so it's actually quite well balanced I've obviously got a lot more padding to add here but it's actually the shapes working out one thing to add next is to be bunging the tail on so I just use a bit of pipe cleaner for the tail and I have one lying around that's about the right length already so again always folding the ends over so there's nothing jabby for people is, is, that, is that even a word is that the right word jabby yeah so guys while I'm busy doing this has anyone got any other questions that they want to know about being an online entrepreneur being an artist being any of these things just let us know any of your questions or give me a wee chat what you've been doing with your day or just give us a hello and chat let's let's see how who we've got here now that I've been oh been gibbering away for 40 minutes that's not bad for me uh, yeah we've got 17 watching so awesome and 11 thumbs up thank you so much um if you remember give me a thumbs up if you're liking it whoever it was that gave us a thumbs down thank you too it's all engagement um yeah so thank you so all so much for joining me with this i actually think it's not being a total disaster yet it's not going to be totally finished tonight because the little dog has um curls on it and i have to create the curls yet um i do have videos on how to make needle felting curls if you want to check them up when we're when we're done here it's so easy um, but it's going to take a day for them to dry so I've just got to wait for that but yeah that's that's the next thing oh here's Harley uh, good to see you um, yeah so this wee dog won't be finished but you're get, getting an idea that he's kind of getting there so that's the tail I would normally felt these quite a little quite a bit more more firmly but we're trying to get a bit of shape here live so and yeah so far touch wood and all that or there's actually real wood there touch wood I haven't stabbed myself yet nothing disastrous has happened which is awesome <laughs> um, yeah thank you all guys for joining me I suppose I better ask right has the football finished and what happened I am not a big fan of football and I'm just really glad to be well away from it. I live not far away from Glasgow and it's bad enough when when we have what we call the old firm matches, uh, which is Celtic and Rangers. When they play, the city is unpleasant. If you get stuck in the train when the, some of the fans are coming home, it's really revolting. So I can just imagine what it's going to be like everywhere, all around all the pubs where football's happening just now. Um, yeah for for people who aren't in the UK and probably get other news on their telly that isn't all about our football um England's done a thing with football <laughs> yeah so, so the football's finished right let me know Ed, everyone cover your eyes if you don't want to see oh England look sorry I'm I'm terribly sorry to hear that <laughs> No, I am. England were doing well and I know it can be like really enjoyable if it's your thing. So I am I am sorry for anyone who's who's sad about that. Um to be honest, I can't stand football, so there's no there's no point in me bothering about whether they won or lost. But I kinda I feel sorta of sad because I know this wasn't a massive team well it must have been a good team but I know people were reckoning this was the easy match um, but clearly not so well bad luck but they've had a good run and I guess that means that people can watch I think Wimbledon's on and there's the Tour de France so there's lots of other sports yeah uh, someone someone the other side of the coffee shop was watching the game with Harley but he doesn't know anything about it that's that's how I like football if it's the other side of the room so that, <laughs> that's cool but thanks for letting me know Sue that I don't follow it but you kind of want to know what happened and I'm mainly kind of happy with England just simply because it means I don't have to follow it anymore I don't have to ask people 
Oh, well, the dog started snoring now. <laughs> so sorry if you hear snoring in the background from the dogs. So we're getting this guy a little more padded up. And this is really all there is to it with any of them. You find out what the skeleton of the animal's like and you build you build an armature, you build the skeleton like what the animal's like and then you just wrap it up thinking of where the, where the muscle groups are, where the muscles are the thickest. And you just wrap your core wall around that thinking of this shape and yeah they always turn out pretty pretty good <laughs> that's the closest harley's got to the football in, the, in a long time fantastic yeah i'm i'm always happy to avoid football but there's other so many cool sports out there and i see people were posting on facebook a load about how you know it wasn't the the first time in 60 years or whatever that England's got this far because the women's team got this far like three years ago but on uh, I don't watch telly anymore I don't watch the news I don't follow any of these kind of things but on conventional media in the UK basically the only sports you hear about is mainly football and then a tiny bit of other sports but that's it which is totally annoying I'm just padding out this dog's middle a wee bit doing a little figure eight over the top over the top of his legs having to remember to keep showing this to the camera as well so everything's still clear with this what I've been doing this is rather weird but I think it's a bit more fun than attempting to do a tutorial and then everyone says I've speeded everything up too fast and you can't see what I'm doing so this is this is real time this is how it really works and basically I do the body in the in the core wall color and then I'll build up the head when I get round to it possibly not tonight um, but you get the shape nice and nice and felted in nice and firm and then you start adding the colours, or in this case, it's going to be uh, the beautiful light sandy tan colour that I've got. I'm going to blend in some other browns because I see it's a bit darker through its pores. And then turn those into curls as well and get a slightly curly dog. I think this is a cavapoo or a cockapoo or something. I'll have to check with the, check with the customer. It's always a weird thing when the dogs lie on their back, their tail comes up and pokes through like it's it's covering covering their modesty there. I don't know why they do that, but they always seem to do that. Wow, it's getting so warm here and I live I think I've told you before in a in a stream, but I live opposite a park, so while I'm streaming I can't leave the windows open because then all you'll hear is kids screaming and um, yeah what what people don't seem to who are not from the UK don't seem to realize is the UK doesn't have air conditioning so for the past couple of weeks when we were at about 35 degrees which degree C um, I don't work in Fahrenheit when we were at about 35 degrees C that was really hot not only are we not used to it but there's no air conditioning well I have a small amount of air conditioning in my car but there's nothing in the house we get to open a window if it gets really hot so that's that's that so guys can you let me let's let's get to know each other a bit in the chat I just want to know if you guys um what what do you do <laughs> what what do you do to create what what artists have we got um, I know we've got some needle felters. I'm not sure. I don't think Wendy can can post on here, but um, we've got some some needle felters in. But what what all do you make? Um, Harley makes everything. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, the House of Hacks, his um, YouTube channel is really awesome. I still plan. He's done a really great. He's done some really great photography idea videos that I really want to try out. I think it was the light bulb what yeah um taking the glass off and firing up the light bulb so you get the 
get the really cool effect, but I'm terrified that it's going to blow all the fuses in the house because if I sneeze the wrong way, the fuses in my house go out. But yeah, you guys want to check out Harley. Um, but what do the what do the rest of you do? Are you artists? Do you create? Do you make videos? Do you make blogs? Or do you just like to watch poor idiots like us <laughs> sitting creating things? And have you tried needle felting or is that something you, you fancy trying in the future? Oh, we've got Selena in the house. Hi there, how are you doing? And yeah, so here I know, I know Selena is a wonderful YouTube person with about six channels just now, but Selena Plays, you've really got to check out. I love her channel. Um, she's playing she's um play yeah she's playing the sims but she's got um oh we've got another ah selena subscribed thank you so much selena um yeah she's currently doing a, a challenge on the sims i think it's the sims 4 i can't remember but it's the legacy eras challenge am i saying that right um where she's got this little family that she's been taking from like way back caveman stone age and just bringing up the family through through all the eras and it is so i it, it's like my soap opera i don't watch soap operas but she started with with a little family a couple of people and their their dog called Zach who i think i was very disappointed um i think she she sent his ghost away to the netherworld <laughs> he was he was so cool um but yeah the the poor family's dying off um the patriarch of the family when he died and she had to plead with death to try and get him back but yeah it's absolutely awesome so you guys if you haven't if you haven't checked that out you should give it a check although um selena's been on a little bit of a break for this week so um but it's it's so cool and i can't wait for my soap to come back uh, Marjolin is a needle felter, likes to make fantasy creatures and make items requested by friends. Awesome! I would love to have the time to make some more fantasy items. I've had so much fun um, some years ago when I made... No, I'm not going to say... I never say anything right. I don't know how to speak, do I? But a centre... Is it the horseman thing? Um, because I got the gallery that I was in, they were doing uh, Narnia... Um, What's the words I'm looking for? Wardro uh, <laughs> they were doing the Narnia thing and they, they wanted sculptures for that. So I did like lots of little animals. We did a Mr. Tumpkin, the goatee thing. Um, and I did the, the man horse and he was so much fun. But I have to admit, um, it was it was too much fun. I, I don't do human figures very often, so felting his little six pack and then his little fuzzy man nipples, so much fun. <laughs> I giggled all the way through it. Winced a little bit, but giggled as well. So that was good fun. I'd love to do more fantasy things and obviously dragons. I love dragons so much. Uh, Oh, Selena's just getting over being sick. So, well, glad to, glad to hear you getting over it, and yet yeah, look forward to look forward to when you're when you're back. I'll be there. Uh, Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe. Thank you. It's th this is an amazing thing. Um, on a live stream on YouTube, I see I definitely lose the ability to speak after about an hour. Sometimes it's sooner. Let like, let's not lie. Kind of. I don't have that ability very great at the start, but I lose the ability to speak after about an hour. So that's that's kind of usually about the limit of my streams, just because I forget words. But yeah, the line, the witch and the wardrobe. Thank you, Selena, and thank you, Mum. Uh, crafting Amy is a beginner at needle felting, made one mushroom so far. That's awesome. Mushrooms are so much fun. Is that... um? Is it Sue from Needle Felt in UK that does a lot of the mushrooms? Have you been following her along? Um, she she is so awesome. Um, and yeah, if you're not, I I don't know if you are. If you're not in 
Needle Felt in UK, the Facebook group, which I don't run, nothing to do with me, but it's an awesome, really friendly group, so it's worth joining. And yeah, um, you could also join Pam Duthie's Felt in Friends. You could join my group as well. Let's let's plug myself. But yeah, um, so that's so exciting though. You've made one project, your first ever project. So yeah, that's really cool. And they can only get better, but yeah, that sounds fun. I should do the dragons from Game of Thrones. I totally should. I did a dragon a few years back because I love dragons. Um, and right, as I felt, little bits kind of dent in. I don't know if this shows up on camera. Little bits need a little bit more, so I just add a bit of fluff to that. That's all I'm doing there. Yeah, so I made a dragon ages ago. I always make dragons. I love dragons. Um, and then last year I did a series on making a dragon but I was really I didn't want to at the time I didn't want to make it look all all Game of Thronesy because I was feeling all precious it's like no I've liked dragons before you guys <laughs> it's, it seems like all my life it's going no I I liked Lord of the Rings before you guys all enjoyed it and I like <laughs> I like dragons before Game of Thrones but um yeah I I actually think it would have it probably is something I should have done was actually tried to jump on the Game of Thrones bandwagon a bit and tried to make make her three and I won't I won't lie after I've made the dragon I did go around with it on my shoulder for quite a bit and yell where are my dragons and I, I was Khaleesi for a little while I can't lie about <laughs> all right um as Susan now still not very good at needle felting but try and make some nurses for colleagues my ideas are better than the end results oh so I know that feeling so much I I have had so many great ideas and when you felt them hilariously actually the first ever the first and only time before this about a year ago where I tried to do a live stream and make something at the same time I was trying to make a Pikachu and that should be super easy I can make things like that but I thought that'd be a nice easy thing and I sat chatting away to people and felt in a way and oh my goodness he was awful I kind of finished it and I was like ah I've got to stop this live stream right now because this is an embarrassment um yeah so the idea in my head was so much better um but trying to make some nurse nurse colleagues that sounds so much fun and do you know it's really good to try yourself with really complicated projects like you know, to really try and push yourself because you learn so much more that way I went through um, I think it's really good to try and felt dead big things and then teeny tiny small things to try different detail to try different mediums and then you'll get your own style so much quicker so yeah that sounds awesome um, you really have to when you get the nurses done you've got to share them I really want to see them that sounds cool oh Amy's in Canada learning as learning as I can yeah I totally understand and actually there, there's so much supportive people out there and it's really cool now um but there's no wrong or right way to do it I started Needle Felton about 10 years ago now and I saw one book and I think there was a there was a forum I was going to say Facebook but I don't know if Facebook Facebook was around back then but it was it was a forum the felting forum and that was it there was no wonderful Serafina if anyone hasn't seen her she's like the queen of YouTube needle felting she does these tutorials like in six or seven parts where it's just like sit felt for four set you know make it she's got all these like shapes rather than just my felting is kind of add a bit add a bit of that she's very much she's got make a taco shape make a ghost shape and she'll do these shapes stick them on the piece and you're like a face came out of that how did that happen <coughs> Selena has a room in her house that has paints embroidery craft stuff I always start projects but never finish I just want to make all the things yeah you, a craft a craft room or a playroom I know so many people with with that uh, looking at you mum you have this room that starts out and it's beautifully planned and beautifully organized and then just stuff more and more stuff and started projects and bits of this over here yeah I know loads of people <laughs> like that I kind of have a craft house I've got bits and bobs I 
did for years I would start things and not really get anywhere with them and it's so weird that needle felting was just one thing I just picked it up I just it was a thing I just started but um, I just didn't stop I just kept doing it so it's been really cool so I don't know I always thought there's people who can stick at things or there's people who do a bit of everything and I thought I was a bit of everything person um, jack of all trades but actually what it turned out was I just hadn't found the right thing so needle felting seems to be the right thing Marjolin does love making little dragons, little characters, orangutans and monkeys. I've returned to teaching full time so it makes it limited. Yeah, of course, the job does get in the way. Unless you can just get the kids working working away, doing their own thing and you can sit and felt. I've wanted to do, an, I did an orangutan years ago and actually he, was, he turned out so good at the time for the level I was at. I'll have to dig out a picture of him. He was so cute. But it's driving me mental doing things like trying to make ears. Ears are so difficult, especially he was about half the size of this dog. He was tiny and trying to felt ears. It's not easy. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm your queen of YouTube for needle felting. Oh, that is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm... I do what I can. Like I say, I've been doing it for 10 years, so hopefully I've learned some things. And I just wanted to share a different perspective. Uh, because Serafina is amazing and everyone should watch her. And I felt every time she brings out a new tutorial, I felt along with her as well. But a lot of it, it was getting to the point where people, new people were coming to Needle Felton and they were thinking that is the way you have to do it. This is how you need all felt. And I just wanted to demonstrate as well that it's not, we all have so many different styles. You know, nobody, nobody taught me. I just sat and stabbed things. I had one book, um, which is the Fleece Dogs book, which I think is over in my bookshelf there, um, which is a great book, but it is mainly, it's just, here's a picture of a dog, make something this shape. Um, make a head this shape, make a body this shape, stick them together, there you go. And actually that suited me so well. I'm terrible at following things. I want to just sit and sculpt it. Uh, Selena, have I had any needle felting accidents? Of course I have. I am a very clumsy person. The worst things are generally these needles are so, they're so little, it's in the holder so you can't really see, but they're so kind of little and skinny that I I can send needles flying and then not be able to find them for ages and obviously because I've got the dogs I'm like crawling around on the floor because I don't want the dogs to find the needle. Um, I don't touch wood, it's going to happen now. I don't break needles very often. These are very actually fragile things so if you put pressure on them, if you were to, when you felt in you've got to felt straight down and straight back up if you and I'm not going to stick it in the piece obviously but if you felt it into the piece and kind of bent the needle slightly then it's gonna the needle's gonna break and you can either have the tiny point of the needle flying across the room and um or the worst one I'd been making it was a dash hound dog and it was one of the biggest ones I'd made it was really big and I'd felted it and it was really nice and firmly felted I was nearly finished felt 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 snap and the needle was right inside the dog and there's no way I could send a piece off to a customer with a broken bit of needle sitting in it um, so I had to, I tried out with I got the super strong is it neodym, neodymium magnets. I got one of them and I was holding it and it just wasn't getting to the it just wasn't getting the needle piece out. So I had to do some major head surgery for for the poor little dog just snipping into his head, cutting around until I finally found this um this needle took that out and then had to refix the head so yeah that was a bit heartbreaking but it's the cool thing about needle felting that I can fix them I do constantly stab my fingers I'm I'm either not so bad now or I've developed so many calluses on my fingertips that I don't even notice but um basically 
it's just generally a little jab. Occasionally I'll get like a tiny, tiny stick, you know, pin stick in my finger, but it's nothing much. I have sorry people, um if you're a bit squeamish, but there was on some of the forums somebody posted and I think it was because they fell onto a cushion. This is this is the strangest thing. Everyone goes, ah, cringe, you're holding the piece up in the air. Um, but I think it's better for my posture. I'm sitting great and I am kind of lounging here. But um, yeah, so I read and what had happened, they'd stabbed into their finger and it snapped off and they actually had to go into surgery to get this removed. So yeah, sorry about that. But it is possible. But that's the limit of it. We've got a little needle. I, I suppose you know, it could injure you a little bit. How I injured myself the most was such a stupid one, but I also do the needle felting pom-poms, which are so much fun. I've got none down here, but if you haven't seen the videos, not just mine, but if you search for needle felted Shiba Inu, however you say the dog's name, uh, not pom-pom Shiba Inu, there's this um, Japanese woman, this is what got me started with the pom-poms, and she makes these pom-pom dog faces that are just amazing, She, it, it's fantastic. Um, but anyway, for the injury with that, what happened with me was I'd wrapped up the pom-pom so, so tight, and I was trying to close the pom-pom maker, I was filming this at the time, so I was trying to close the maker and sensibly I thought to move some of the wool over it, it kind of lodged itself over the back end of the maker and I needed to move it over. So I thought I would use the scissors to pull the wool over and of course the scissors slipped, went right into my hand and there's me. I, I, <laughs> to actually, I just carried on, just trying to dab up the blood and then keep, keep doing keep doing the video so I had in editing I had to cut the video in such a way that you couldn't see the gash in my hand so yeah it wasn't any actual real damage it was just a little bit cut um but yeah that could have really really been a sore one um Marjolaine oh night night thank you so much for joining me uh yeah it's 10 o'clock here I think it's it's 11 o'clock in Europe I think you're you're a step ahead of an hour ahead of us. I can't remember. I get confused with with time differences. Oh, Amy appreciates the the freeing approach. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's that's the good thing is that we're all different and we all have different ways of doing things. And some people really, um, some people really need a step by step. You know, they really need a tutorial that says take this am amount of this and do and do this. But I've never sort of really been that kind of person it's entirely my mum's fault I'm going to take any time we were doing anything like if you're cooking and you say how much of this do you add and she'll just go oh that much everything's by feel so so it's her fault she she makes us like this <laughs> um so yeah it is more just a bit of this a bit of that and but the, th the thing is for anyone that's just starting out, I would say just go for it anyway. Just wing it and see what happens. There's, the raw materials are cheap. Roll up a ball, ball, stab it, and you get to know what's going on. But basically, once you've been doing it a little while, you don't need to know the exact quantities. Um, you get a feel for how much of a pinch of this one goes in. Yeah. Or if it's too much, you can just tear a piece off, rip a piece off, so you get the feel for it. Oh, sorry, you're in the UK. You're born in Holland, but just didn't need to sleep. I don't blame you at all. Good night. <laughs> and mum, yes, of course you get the blame. Cat, hi there. How you doing? <laughs> YOLO. You can still say that, yes. You only live once. I don't know if the cool cool kids are saying that. I've never been one of the cool kids, so we can say YOLO. And yes, Mum, of course you always get the blame. All right, let's see how he's doing compared to his his what I'm trying to make. So I think the proportions are not bad, if you guys can see that. The head will come in later. That's pointing off. Oh my God, that's, yeah, that's in the right direction with a little tail poking through. Um, 
So a couple of extra things I want to be looking at is I think there's the little flap of skin that comes comes from the leg to the belly. I'm just going to try and add that just now. So that's just like a little pinch of fleece. And I just just going to run it between my fingers. Don't don't cringe guys. But this is just the easiest way to get a really thin piece of fleece I find. So I'm felting in between my fingers. I'm not actually touching my fingers. I know it looks scary as anything. But <laughs> just gently running the needle sort of it's almost sliding alongside my thumb. And this just firms this up nicely. <laughs> Carp day hymns a fancy fancy YOLO. Uh, Selena, how much would it cost to make what I'm making? For me, in raw materials, it's super cheap, really. I shouldn't tell you. No, well, no. The, the price in needle felting things is in the time. As you can see, we've been going, you know, this is an hour's worth, and I'm nowhere near finished with them. We're, we're not going to finish tonight. I don't expect you to, you guys to stay with me for the whole of the thing. Um, but roughly the wool... Um, 100 grams of this core wool is £1.80, so it's like under $2 in the rest of the world. Um, and this won't even take, this won't take 100 grams. So it's less than a pound's worth of wool. Um, the, the floristry wire... Um, I think that's a couple of pounds for 50 of them so a couple of pennies <laughs> and yeah the top coat's a little bit more expensive the the colored fibers they're about two three I think the one because I've had to order my one from America for the right color for this dog that's about four pounds for a hundred grams but I'll be able to make 20 30 dogs with it so it's way 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 less Two, three pounds it's not that much I, I I just have a video dropping on next week I'm um, talking about prices actually and I do talk about you should know the cost of your raw materials and everything but I won't lie I don't cost up how much my raw materials cost for needle felting for each each piece because it is so so much not the most important factor in in felting it's super cheap um yeah um cat used to do polymer clay yeah the the wool goes so far um yeah so many crafts are super expensive um i remember polymer clay i used to do a lot of polymer clay see you can't speak i used to do a lot of polymer clay when i was when i was younger and yeah, it really adds up. And if you're wanting to make like I've always worked on a small scale. This this is big for me. Um but if you were wanting to make decent sized sculptures in polymer clay, that's gotta get really expensive. But they do look cool and it, it's lovely and it's fun to work with. I mean I think when I was a kid at school I used to make little badges for my friends, um, and sell them and stuff. So I've always always been crafty with things and yeah, I, I love polymer clay. I'm actually looking into, and yeah, cat, this will be good good for you, is a lot of people using the polymer clay like to make mouths, teeth and tongues for the dogs. I think that can look really awesome. So if you're skilled at, skilled at polymer clay, it's a good mixed media thing. So, you know, the two of them, the two of them can work with each other it's something I want to try in the future people have even said this actually this can be one of my one of my review tutorial type videos I'll have to try that is they're saying that you can sculpt something onto your wireframe that already has wool on it and the polymer clay like your phimos and stuff these kind of clays bake in the oven at a low enough temperature that it doesn't actually damage the wool which I'm really dubious about so that's something to try for a video I think to see if that really works um, but yeah that could be kind of interesting to give that a try um, 
Oh, you can't. You still do your polymer clay, but the time goes into felting at the moment. Yeah, well, I think when you when you start on a new, a new or a different, a different craft, it's important to spend the time to get good at the one of them. So you do sort of focus on focus on one a lot more. Are you going to do the mixed media? Plus, you do resin work. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Incorporate all of it into the art dolls. That's so. I love them. The way you can do it, the mixed media, and it's great for for everyone who does the whole lots of different crafts and never know which one you can in, incorporate it into everything. I've lost my ability to speak. Oh, Selena, it's so nice of you to drop by. It was so good to see you, and I look look forward to more videos now that you're feeling better. Thank you so much. But good to see you. Thank you for joining us and chatting. I think I'm pretty close to wrapping this up just now anyway. I've got, actually, I feel he's coming along. It, I think it looks a bit like a dog. <laughs> still a load of work on him. I should have him done by, sorry, hay fever is still happening so I'm still rubbing my eyeballs. Um, I should have him done by Sunday and I'll let you all see where we've got to on the Sunday stream or pictures in Pam Duffy's Felting Friends to see how this little guy turns up. Um, if you've got any more questions just throw them up or um, if you want to start saying goodnight in the chat. Um, but yeah this has been awesome. It was Wendy on Sunday that suggested that maybe Maybe you would like to see some felt along with me. And I have plan, um, hopefully I'll think up some some nice nice things that we can all make together and do an actual proper felt along with me where if, if you guys are wanting a make that we can all do like a tutorial or we'll work together. Um, so I'll think of think of some proper ones for that. But I just thought I would see if I could do felting and chatting to you guys and nothing terrible's happened we haven't exploded the internet it seems to have worked quite nicely so guys thank you so so much for joining me this is this has been fun a little bit scary um but i think i think it's not been a disaster my fingers are quite unscathed no blood not even faking it <laughs> i've not injured myself so thank you so much for joining me this bit of a different one but I really enjoyed doing it this is different if you can let me know in the comments or on the Facebook group if you prefer rather than a tutorial rather than a film tutorial if you prefer this kind of more relaxed chatty type of way to do it then I can make smaller projects that we can maybe finish in the hour or so um, but and if you've got any questions that you want me to ramble on about if you leave them in the groups so I can research the things but Sue, Kat, Selena, oh, hiccups now. Um, everyone who's joined us, who else did we have in here? We had Mary, my mum, Marjolaine, um, and we had Rosani had dropped in for a little while, Amy, oh, and now my mouse wheel's scrolling totally the wrong way. And then we, oh, and Harley and Brian, and everyone, everyone else who was in the stream, thank you all so much have a lovely evening um i am nearly finished the jack skeleton doll so i've got the last of my tutorials for that should be coming up tomorrow and yeah that's everything thank you so much have a great evening